Hi friends and welcome! In this video, I'm going to explain AWS Amplify in plain English and in only a few minutes. We're not going to build out a fully working application, but I will show you how to get started with all of the main components. Before we dive into a demo though, let's spend just a second talking about why Amplify even exists in the first place and why you might want to use it. A traditional full stack application might look something like this. You've got your front end, you've got the back end, probably some kind of authentication so users can log in. In most modern apps, you also have a database. You probably have storage for files or images, that type of thing. And then there's various other services that you might use as well. Maybe third party providers, a notification system, AI services, a whole bunch of different things that could end up here. But the point is there's a lot of moving parts. And when you think about building all of that stuff out in AWS, especially if you aren't super familiar with the AWS ecosystem, it can be a little bit overwhelming. In AWS land, it might look like this. You likely have to set up at least a half dozen different services and configure them. And in addition, you also need to understand the overall infrastructure of AWS. Like how does networking work? What about identity and access management? That type of stuff. So it's just a lot. The idea with Amplify is that we can just say, okay, I don't really know or care about all that stuff. I just want to build an app. My app's going to need a front end, some type of authentication, an API, storage, and a function that does something. Then go set everything up for me. So you just get to kind of pick and choose what you need for the application, answer some questions about the details, and then Amplify goes and does its magic on everything else. So it's really meant to simplify full stack development especially for doing quick prototypes and that kind of thing. So with that background, let's go step through the main pieces in the console. First thing we want to take a look at is the Amplify app. This is basically just a container for your code and configuration and the different services as you build things out. You can do this through the browser or through the Amplify command line interface or CLI. I will briefly show you both. From the AWS console, just navigate to Amplify. And it's super easy to create a new app. Just say new app and then build an app. You can also just host a web app. We'll talk about that later, but let's start by building an app. For this one, we'll call it my app from browser to distinguish it from the one that we'll create on the CLI in just a minute. And this will take a minute to spin everything up. It's doing a whole bunch of stuff for you in the background. I'll pause the video for just a second and be back when it's done. Okay, so here's our app, which again is just kind of like a container to hold everything else. And it's easy peasy to create through the browser. But it is more common that you'll be working with Amplify through the CLI. So I want to show you what that's like. If you look at any tutorials or documentation, chances are that the steps will be through CLI commands. I'm going to be using Cloud9, which is AWS's integrated development environment or IDE in the browser, but this will also work with your local IDE of choice like Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ or any of the other popular IDE options. But for Cloud9, let me just quickly spin something up here. I won't make you wait through all the details of this since this is not the point of the demo, but I'll spin up the environment and be right back. Okay, my IDE is launched and ready to go. I've got a console window open down here on the bottom. And regardless of your IDE, you will need to install the Amplify CLI, which you can do with npm install dash g at aws dash amplify slash CLI. And this will let me do other things from the command line here related to Amplify. Might take just a minute. After the Amplify CLI is installed, then we want to initialize a new Amplify project. You can do that with Amplify init. And then it'll prompt you for some additional details. For this one, I'm going to say my app from CLI. It'll give me some default settings here. Let me expand that. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to go with yes for all of these. We'll say this looks good. I just really want to show you how to get started. And then we also need to select our authentication method. If you've already set up an AWS profile, you can use that. I'm just going to use access keys. These are the access keys for an IAM user. Go to IAM, grab your access key and secret access key for that user. I've got those on my clipboard, so I'll just paste those in. Then we need to select the region that we're using. I'm in US West 2, 
And incidentally, I'm just using the up and down arrow to move between these options. So with US West 2 selected, I'll hit the Enter key. And now it's setting up our backend environment. And then behind the scenes, it's using AWS Cloud Formation. If you're not familiar, that's the infrastructure as code solution. We'll take a closer look at that a little bit later, but you'll see that it's creating an S3 bucket for me and then a couple of roles to give us the appropriate access that we need. So that completed. Some additional questions here. Do we want to share non-sensitive configuration on failures? I'm just going to say no for this. We'll keep it easy. And then it's giving us a tip on what we could try next. But just as a sanity check, what a lot of people like to do is use the CLI here to take action. And then you can go back to the browser here, the Amplify console. And if we take a look at all apps, we should now have the app from the CLI right here. And it looks like everything worked perfectly. Okay, so we've got the container or the app created. Next, let's talk about the front end. Remember, this is a full stack solution. So you've got front end and back end. Front end could be something like a single page app, like a React app, or a static front end, something like HTML files and images, that type of thing. So back here in the browser, to get to the front end functionality, you want to click on hosting environments. And from here, you can deploy the front end. So if you've already got something built out, you just hook it up to where that code lives. So GitHub or GitLab and so forth. Or you can even just upload something right here by dragging and dropping, deploying without a Git provider. I'll just do this quickly to show you how easy it is. So we could just drag and drop a file here. We could pull something from an S3 bucket or any other URL. I happen to have an index.html page here, a super simple page, and then a picture of a cat. If you do choose to drag and drop something into Amplify, it needs to be in a zip file. But there is a gotcha with this. What you want to do is select your files and then zip up the files. Don't zip up the containing folder. So I'll just right click on these and then send to folder. Make sure that it's called index.zip. Sometimes it will get called cat or some other name of your file. And then we can just drag the index.zip over here. We'll save and deploy. This is nothing spectacular. I just want to show you how you can get a front end working through Amplify. Here's our domain. So this is a hosting solution. You'll see it's being hosted on AmplifyApp.com. And if I were to click on this, you'll see my fancy HTML page and the picture of a cat because all YouTube videos should have cats. So if this is all I wanted was a static website, then that's basically all you need to do. Just deal with the front end part. And that's actually a perfectly valid use case for Amplify. Just use it for this instead of something like a static website in an S3 bucket. In fact, I have another video where we do just use Amplify to deploy a static page. Link above and below if you're interested in that. But assuming that you do want to have a back end for your application as well, you can obviously do that with Amplify. So moving on to the back end, here we're saying that we want authentication, an API, storage, and a function that does something. There's other components as well, like a database and so on that you can add. Again, we're not building this out as a full functioning application, but I just want to show you how to kind of plug and play these back end components. Now, adding these back end components, again, is typically done through the CLI, and it'll give you kind of a prompt or a wizard asking you for the details that it needs. But if you don't even know where to start, you can actually get some help from the browser to begin with. So, back here in the browser in our app from CLI, click on back end environments. And then if you click on the name of the environment here, dev is the one that we chose when we set this up, you'll see down here the different components that you can add. So you can say, oh, I want authentication, or I want an API or storage, and so on. For us, let's say that we want an API. And very handily, it will give you the command down here for the CLI. So you can then take this, run it in the CLI to set up that API, and you're off and running. So let's just get started on this one for a simple API. I'll copy this code, and then we'll go back to my IDE here, or back to VS Code, or wherever you're running this, and I'll paste that in. So we're saying take that app that we created earlier and add an API to it. And then it's going to ask us questions that it needs to know in order to do that. So do we want to use GraphQL or REST? Let's go with REST just to keep things simple. A friendly name for the resource, I'll call it my first API. Enter. 
a path for the API. With an example for something like a bookstore, I'll just leave it with slash items since I'm not actually building this out fully, but you could put something else in there. And then the API gateway is going to be used in conjunction with a Lambda function. Link above and below if you want to know more about Lambda. But let's give that a name, my first Lambda function. The runtime for the function will go with Node.js, but there's other options as well. We'll just stick with the Hello World template. Again, I'm just going through these really quickly just to show you how easy it is to add something like an API to your application. There's additional advanced settings that you can configure if you need to, but we're going to go with no. We don't want to edit the Lambda function now. We can always do that later. We don't want to restrict access. We don't want to add another path. And voila. So everything has been set up locally, and you'll see that message there added locally. That means that it hasn't actually been pushed out to the cloud, out to Amplify yet. It's just here in my IDE. So if I take a look at Amplify here, and expand my code files, looking at back end, we've got API. So here's my first API. If we go to function, here's my first Lambda function. And the source code for that will be in index.js. So just a boilerplate, hello world, template for Lambda. So everything is just local, but you get a nice message down here of what you could do next. So if we say amplify push, that'll take all of the local changes here and push them out to the cloud. So let's do that. It'll give you a nice summary of what it's going to do. We've got one function, one API, and so on. So just to confirm, let's say yes, let's do this. And then it's going to go off and do its thing. Now you can check the progress of this if we come back to the Amplify console here and take a look at the Overview tab. Here's what's going on here. So we've got an update in progress, Amplify backend deployment initiated. I mentioned that behind the scenes, this is just running a CloudFormation template. You can even open up CloudFormation and go take a look at what's happening there. So we'll open up a new tab. And you'll see I've got a create in progress and an update in progress here. So the magic of Amplify really isn't magic at all. It's just using CloudFormation behind the scenes, but it's kind of abstracting all of that away from you as a developer. So you don't have to know how to create a CloudFormation template or how to create an S3 bucket and those types of things. As this progresses, you should also be able to go into the different services like Lambda, for example. And we should have a function created out there. That was just our hello world function. And I'll sort by last modified. Here we go. My first Lambda function dev. We should also have an API gateway resource set up for us. Here we go. My first API. And we had told it slash items to use for our path in the API. This is just kind of a dummy API at the moment since we didn't really build it out. But all of the resources that it asked us about in the CLI, all of these things are being created behind the scenes for us. If we go back to the Amplify console now, we can refresh the overview here. Looks like everything completed. And you'll see that we have a function, that's our Lambda function, as well as the API. They're now part of the back end of this application. If you wanted to continue building this out, you could say, OK, I think I need to add some authentication. This will add Amazon Cognito. You can add storage and a bunch of other things. So again, just allowing you to kind of pick and choose the different parts of your application without having to know all the specifics of how they work and how to set them up and configure them and so on. All right, one last thing to show you before we wrap up, and that is Amplify Studio. This will give you a really nice visual interface to build out your full stack apps. You do need to go enable it, so I can do that from right here. We will enable Amplify Studio. While we're waiting for that, if you found this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button for me and also consider subscribing for additional content like this. OK, that's been enabled. And now if we go back to the application here, back in environments, we can launch Studio now. This will open up in a new tab. And this gives you a lot of additional options for setup. So over here on the left, you could add authentication like we saw before. There's additional things here, though, as well, and also a UI library to help you with your user interface. So just a lot more here. I find this a little bit overwhelming sometimes, though, for beginners, which is why I saved it to the end. But there's a lot more that you can do with Amplify. 
Now, before you leave me, very important, let's go delete the resources that we spun up. In case you were following along, I don't want you to have any surprise bills. So we'll come back to the Amplify console here, go to All Apps, and then make sure you delete anything that you created along with me. You can just click into it, come up to Actions, and then Delete App. This should use CloudFormation to get rid of any resources that it created, but we will want to just double check that. I will delete this one as well, my app from the CLI, Delete App. We'll let those run. If you were using Cloud9 like I was for an IDE, make sure you shut that down as well. So I'll just delete. I'll let that run. We can look at Cloud Formation here to make sure that things are getting deleted. I'll just refresh that. So we see delete in progress for those. That's looking good. So it's deleting things like the API Gateway endpoint, some S3 buckets that got created. Lambda functions, and so on. Let's just go do a quick sanity check. If we look at API Gateway here, come up to APIs. These are two of my other projects that were already here, but the new one that we created has been deleted, so that's perfect. Let's just double check Lambda. Make sure that everything got deleted there. Sort by last modified. It looks like all of the recent things are deleted. Again, these are some old ones that I had here, so that's fine. We'll come back to the Amplify console, and just make sure that everything's good. And all of the new apps that we created are gone. So there you have it. That was kind of a whirlwind tour of Amplify, why it exists, why you might want to use it, and how to get started creating the front end and back end for your full stack application. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And check out some of my other AWS videos on the channel.